All right. Hey guys, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Now, if you are planning to do AWS uh, Solution Architect Professional Certification uh, anytime soon, I have some tips for you. Uh, because I did this exam uh, in last December, 31st of December last year, and I got through it. Uh, so I thought of like sharing some of my uh, exam prep tips as well as uh, during the exam some of the tips that I followed which really came in handy uh, and thought of sharing with you guys. Now uh, the main reason I did this exam is guys, uh, this is one of the most challenging uh, uh, IT certification and also uh, it's one of the well respected one. And on top of that uh, I have a passion towards AWS. Uh, you know, uh, architecting solution with best practices for real world use cases. And this particular exam really tests your knowledge on that. So I wanted to uh, do this exam and uh, in the learning process and the getting ready uh, process, uh, I can like fill any gaps that I have in terms of uh, architecting solution with the best practices. Now, a uh, little bit about me, I have about uh, six years of experience uh, building production application in AWS. Uh, and uh, I'm more focused on serverless and uh, containerized application development. Uh, so there are a couple of other areas uh, I wanted to uh, improve, uh, such as you know migration, uh, hybrid architectures, and advanced networking, which this exam tests. Uh, so I uh, took this as an opportunity to learn these uh, areas that uh, I need to uh, uh, focus on. Uh, and uh, through this exam, uh, I thought of validate that no validate that knowledge. So a little bit about uh, exam preparation. I uh, use two main uh, materials. Uh, so one uh, material is uh, the uh, online on-demand video course from Udemy. And this is from Stephen's, Stephanie's uh, AWS Solution Architect Professional course. Uh, I chose that because it's one of the uh, course that uh, provided very concise information. I had limited amount of time to get ready. And uh, that uh, uh, information concise, uh, presented in a concise manner really helped me. Um, and on top of that, whenever I find something new, I uh, refer to some other materials like, you know, mostly reinvent videos and documentations and try to fill that gap. Um, you know, if something is new, I did not uh, only focus on the content that is mentioned in the slide. Uh, I, would've, I always wanted to uh, learn a little bit more about it because if I don't know about it, I don't have personal experience. So I want to develop that personal experience. And uh, that's the main reason I went ahead uh, and uh, look at those additional resources. And uh, not only that, I also uh, did some practicals about it and create some personal experience to me and as well as I share that knowledge through this YouTube channel. If you remember, you know, a couple of videos back, I released uh, videos on uh, AWS organization and so on. So those are all uh, part of this uh, learning process. You know, I used about, I spent about three months you now getting ready for this examination. And for the first two months, I spent about two to three hours daily uh, prepping for this exam. Um, and I went through the uh, video course for two times and noted everything that is new to me. And I did my own research on exploration and created videos so that, you know, I will establish that knowledge very well. Because, you know, after all, the best way to learn is to learn by teaching, right? I think you agree with me. Um, and in the last month, really, I uh, actually spent about three hours daily uh, focusing on time management. And in this exam, I think you already know about it. You have to answer 75 questions in three hours. That is, of course, if you haven't applied for uh, 30 minutes extra time, if you are a non-native uh, English speaker. Uh, I'll give some other additional tips towards the end of this video. Uh, but yeah, so I spent three hours daily in the last month focusing on my uh, time management skills. For that, uh, the practice exam from John Bones has really helped me. Uh, I put all these links in the uh, description um, because uh, this practice exam really uh, gives me the idea of how lengthy the questions are, how lengthy the answers are and how quickly I have to uh, answer these questions. You know, usually uh, if you calculate it, basically the three hours and you know divided by you know, uh, 75 questions, you will get about two minutes plus a little bit more uh, time to answer a particular question. But I will uh, really recommend you guys to try to answer a question in two minutes. Uh, because then uh, you will uh, get some time reserved or uh, saved at the end, about 20 to 30 minutes to review your questions. Because uh, for the most part, how well we get ready, uh, we will find some challenging questions. And in that case, uh, we will pick some answers and you know come back to these questions later. So you need some extra time to go over those uh, questions that you have marked as reviewed. Um, so yeah, so try to answer these questions uh, in two minutes. 
and in that two minutes guys make sure you read the question read really well regardless how lengthy the question is uh, you have to read the question very well uh, because you know lengthy the question is uh, the first and foremost don't get intimidated by the lengthy of the question uh, and also the length of the answers because lengthy of the questions uh, you, you will find so many other hints to uh, for you to uh, identify the correct answer because uh, you know all the answers are for the most parts correct so you have to pick the most suitable answer so if you haven't read the questions properly uh, and understand the key terms that the questions is looking for you uh, you will be like uh, won't be able to find the proper the correct answer that the questions is looking for uh, because yeah that's correct uh, all the answers are correct uh, you have to find the most suitable answer in order to do that you need to read the questions read really well and in the question you can find different key terms for example like you know find the most cost effective solution or find the most secure solution uh, and so on so these uh, key terms really gives you some hints to uh, finding the correct answer and in fact when you are reading the question really well uh, since you have studied the materials uh, some time uh, you can really deduce okay this this is the service that really uh, best matched here so you can you know start reading the question with that uh, kind of a uh, thought and then when you go through it you will probably find some answers that matches your uh, thoughts really um, yeah so spend as much as time uh, in that two minutes to understand the questions really well and then uh, when you're picking the answer guys uh, for the most part uh, you will get uh, four to five uh, answers and out of that you have to pick uh, either one correct answer or it could be multiple correct answers because this exam is uh, uh, you will receive multiple response answers and you no know, single response answers so in both cases let me give you a couple of tips on it uh, so if it is a single response answer just first uh, scan through the answers and for the most part you will find some similar answers similar as in you know the text is more or less similar so uh, in that case you can start reading the answers in parallel guys so this is very important so when you start reading the answers in parallel uh, it will save time and, and as well as uh, you can easily compare uh, between those two answers so read it as much as they are similar and when they start to differ then uh, focus on individual answers and read them to the end and then have some judgment okay out of these two answers which is the correct one and so on um, and just don't jump into the conclusion right away you have to read all the answers uh, and uh, you know scan through the answers first so you can identify certain uh, different uh, service name which will give you more attention to these answers uh, but just read through the answers so always focus on the key terms in the question and try to find the answers that matches with the uh, questions requirement uh, so that way uh, you will be able to uh, you know deduce an answer and uh, so other point is do not spend a lot of time even like if the question is challenging and the answers are also challenging just pick an answer that you feel more uh, 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 more like it's the correct answer so have your best judgment and pick an answer and if you are not sure just mark it as review because uh, you will have some time at the end to come back to these answers with a little bit more uh, relaxed mind because you completed 75 questions uh, and then uh, it will it, it will help you to uh, you know review those answers one more time and make sure what you selected is correct and uh, when it comes to multiple response answers guys uh, my uh, tip is first start with the most confident answer because in multiple response you are supposed to pick a couple of answers like two or three answers uh, where the combination of these answers provide the solution to whatever the questions ask for like whatever the use case that the questions uh, ask for uh, so in that case you can always find an answer that uh, you are very much confident confident about and then on top of that try to uh, find the other answers so that way you can easily uh, uh, you know uh, select those uh, required number of answers in the uh, question and then again uh, again uh, don't spend too much time just select the answers that you feel and then always you can come back to it right and then guys i'd like to talk a little bit about the questions that i received in, during my exam you know one thing for sure that you will see in the exam in almost everywhere is aws organization you know uh, i think most of the questions in my exam were related to aws organization 
or at least like they are directly related to the answers or somehow indirectly related because most of these AWS services are one way or another connected to AWS organization uh, because uh, it is a best practice to use AWS organization when you are operating in a, a real world product project. Uh, so you can expect so many questions from AWS organization. So you should know how to design your solution with uh, for organizational complexity and uh, also how to enforce different different uh, policies across your uh, uh, accounts using AWS organization like using SCPs and all that. So if you are not familiar, I think that is really, really essential that you know uh, what AWS organization is and their applications of AWS organization. That's one thing. And other than that, uh, there are different other uh, types of questionnaires received. Uh, for example, like system manager, you know, focus on patch management and it's a fleet of uh, services in AWS system manager. So I get so many questions uh, from AWS system manager. And here are some other services that I got questions from guys, you know, system manager, like I mentioned, many questions and also uh, FSx, you know, Amazon FSx for Windows and Lustre. I got a couple of questions, data sync, uh, server migration service, you know, SMS, uh, database migration service, DMS uh, and Aurora serverless and uh, direct connect gateway, transit gateway, AWS client VPN, shared service VPC. I got uh, several questions from shared service VPC and AWS Firewall Manager and uh, AWS Control Tower and also the guardrails uh, and, uh, and, and you know, couple of questions about AWS guardrails as well. Uh, and also many questions on migrating on-prem solutions uh, because I think I find so many questions really about how to migrate your on-prem solution to AWS and different services uh, related to that. And also hybrid architectures, how to run your uh, resources on premises as well as on cloud in tandem uh, and what are the best practices around this and of course disaster recovery so uh, many questions from disaster recovery as well because I, I have created a blog post on that i'll put the link in the description so you guys can uh, have a look uh, yeah so all in all guys uh, i got some questions on the core areas that is defined in the uh, aws uh, exam guide but uh, in the same time i got uh, many questions from the newly released services. Some these some of these services are released a year ago, like you know, firewall manager, network firewall, control tower, guardrails, um, and uh, you know, FSx for Windows, Lustre, data sync. Now these are like relatively new services, but I received these questions. But and you know, important thing is these questions are not too difficult. Uh, but then again, uh, you have to have some understanding what these uh, services does at least you know high in high level so you can answer these questions so uh, and another point is guys we can't expect all these new services to be covered in the courses uh, that is available on Udemy or anywhere because uh, it takes some time for the course creator to update their course as well so it's your responsibility to look at the latest uh, reinvent videos and uh, and you know about the releases that they have done and go through this at least in high level uh, so that you will have some uh, some understanding about these services so you will not totally be like uh, alien to these names uh, when you hear about it all right yeah so finally some uh, other tips uh, before I conclude this uh, video now first one is uh, as soon as you go through your uh, course or the resource the main resource that you are following just uh, schedule the exam guys right because I did that uh, and that give you give, give me a little bit of a stress Right? And you know, a little bit of stress is always good. So I became exam focused all the time. Uh, and let's say uh, you are not feeling quite ready uh, towards the exam date that you schedule. So there's always an opportunity that you can reschedule your exam two times. And I did that because I wasn't feeling very ready uh, by that time. So I rescheduled it two times. Uh, so you have that opportunity, but you know, get it scheduled. So uh, you have some focus and also uh, some deadlines to work towards that is always good and then uh, you know like I mentioned these questions are really long and you have to answer 75 questions now at least take a break in uh, each every 25 questions right so uh, just take a sip of water and look away because uh, your eyes are kind of stressed as well so that will give you a little bit of a relaxing time to your eyes as well as uh, you know there are different milestones. okay the first 25 question you are, have completed 25 question and when you take another break in the 50th question then you know only there's 25 more questions to uh, answer 
so that will give you some milestone because uh, this is a long exam uh, yeah so that's the second tip and also if you are the non-native English speaker like I am just uh, make sure you apply for that extra 30 minutes uh, e exam accommodation before scheduling the exam now you have to do that before scheduling the exam through the exam portal so that you'll, you will receive some extra 30 minutes which is really helpful by the way uh, and also just join your local user group so uh, for the most part uh, you will be able to uh, you know grab a free voucher exam voucher so you don't have to pay for the exam uh, basically which is a very good thing and that's one of the uh, motivation for me to do the exam as well and uh, yeah finally uh, drink a red bull guys because uh, you need to keep yourself energized uh, through three hours and uh, i think red bull really helps so yeah these are the uh, tips i have for you and uh, like i mentioned i put them into a blog post and article i'll put the link in the description so you guys can uh, go over it and uh, i wish you all the best thank you very much